Real quick guys, before we get into the video, I just want to go ahead and say that the, I am going to go ahead and move the Wrangler. It's a 2006 406 speed. If you guys are in the area of Central Indiana and you're interested in a Wrangler, shoot me a DM on the Instagram. Um, Instagram is denlinley73. But before you do that, in case this is like two years later after this video is posted, please look down below and see if I say that the Wrangler sold or not. It was cool at first, but now I'm going over it, and I want to start driving, daily driving the 12 valve dump truck. This is a really cool truck that I picked up that I cannot wait to get started on doing some stuff on it, but we're trying to hold off on some of that for now. That way we can do it all really quickly. So, yeah, I want to, want to, want to restore this thing kind of quick, do a quick little freshener on it, but if any of you guys are interested in the Wrangler, like I said, 2006, 40, six speed, 125,000 miles. Just please check the description below and see if it's still available if you're inquiring. What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Tonight we're going to be tackling some of the massive wiring issues that the 79, as you guys can see, look at that big bundle of wires. 79 Power Wagon 12 valve swap that I picked up and we're also going to be working a little bit on the intake pipe and going over some of the power steering issues that this truck has. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. Before we get started, do me a favor and visit the website DirtyDiamondDiesel.com. Pick yourself up a shirt hoodie, sticker, key tag, anything to support the channel. We appreciate it guys, but for now, let's get into the video. This is a normal sized RC car, show you what hand is. And here's this thing that sounds like it has a fan running. I guess we can go ahead and throw this on YouTube. Why don't you give them a little demonstration here? You said 150? Yeah, 150. Oh my goodness, that's just by hitting a button. Yeah, it flips this up over. Jeez. Broke it! No! What? What's broke? I don't know, it just looks broken. Yeah, it is. Mason's like that good friend, just lets people destroy his stuff. Alright guys, so I'm thinking it just had like a lot of nasty bad fluid in it. It almost looks like they put engine oil in it, but I'm not 100% for sure. There's not really a way the engine oil can leak through a seal into the power steering system. Um, at least, in, unless it's a really old style pump. It's I guess some of the older ones that could, but this one, the, the oil and power steering fluid do not really ever meet at a point where they should be able to exchange. So. I drained all the old fluid out on the ground and made a mess. You guys can see it's kind of brown looking. And filled it up with fresh new and drove it. And I've just been turning it back and forth. The power steering came back, it's working again. And uh, I think I'm pushing most of the air pockets out, so hopefully we were good. Somehow I think we got lucky and the system just needed to bleed it out and it had some old fluid in it because it's dry. What I was doing before is I'd shut it off and it'd puke out of the power steering fluid reservoir, but I drained all the old fluid out, put new fluid in it, drove it down the road, turned it back and forth a couple times with it running, and I think we're good. I think it's all burped out, all the air is out of it. So fingers crossed, hopefully we don't have to come back to this and mess with it anymore. I really don't want to put a pump on those. To buy that whole pump is really expensive. Uh, you can reseal them, but if it's a problem with the pump, um, I, I just really hope that, that we're okay, and I think we are. So far, uh, it's not puking anything out. I think the fluid, like I said, was just old and needed bled. But now I'm going to go ahead and remove this intake pipe and start seeing if we can mock up uh, redoing the pipe. I don't quite think I'm gonna have enough here to do it how I want to, but I'm gonna clock the turbo 
a little differently and um, see if we can clock it up. All right guys, so I got the turbo broke loose to where I can spin it freely and reclock it. And what I'm thinking is just for not really a forever permanent setup, but for now, for probably a while, um, since I don't want to go through the trouble intercooling this thing right now, there's like, there is no room to fit an intercooler in this thing. This is like worse than an OBS Ford. And I don't want to be rushed to do anything. And like I said, all this will make sense while we're doing it this way now. But um, <clears throat> eventually it'll make sense anyways. So all I'm thinking is uh, I had two options. I could either go back like this and turn it, and this would be the easier option. Like, I mean, that right there kind of looks super stupid, honestly. <laughs> I don't think that's going to be okay. Yeah, I don't really, I don't know. I don't really like that. I don't know. It might clear the hood, but probably not. Um, and then the other option is to do it like this and then make it kind of hoop around the front. So have like a 180 and then back into the intake. Definitely gonna have to do some mandrel bends to get this done. I'm gonna reuse the piece right there that goes into the intake on it. So that'll just look a little better. Maybe if it just kind of swoops around the front, look a little cleaner. Guys, this is not hot truck. Um, plan on intercooling it eventually, like I said, but for now, this is what we're gonna do just so we can cruise this thing and it looks good and just better than what it had. <laughs> the original intake piece cut yeah. here. I may have to cut it a little bit lower because I'm gonna do some mandrel bends um, very similar to how we did them whenever we built my compound turbos on my second gen. If you guys have not seen that, I'll put that link either over here or over here so you guys can check that out. And uh, yeah, so we'll do some mandrel bends, use a chop saw to cut them, and then we'll just have to clean them up. We don't have a really good band saw. So we'll come out, come around the front, do some more mandrels, or I may try and see if I can find some uh, pre made 180s and just try to do like maybe a couple mandrels so we can get from there over to here. Okay, guys, now that I've got that pretty much at a standstill until I can get some pipe. I moved on to cleaning up some of this wiring on the driver's side fender well. Um, this was just, it just looks like a lot more complicated than it really needed to be. I actually am going to be able to salvage some of this and I'll tell you guys something that I am going to do that I said I was going to get rid of. Uh, here's some of the loom that I pulled off. Gosh guys, it almost looks better without the loom. I mean that stuff is just hideous. Red loom is so ugly in this orange. But um, I just started pulling some of that back and just kind of pulling some. A lot of the stuff from when this thing was a 360 is still in here. So a lot of it's just literally useless wires hooked up to nothing. I've also spent some time underneath the truck uh, fixing a fuel leak where it just needed a clamp put on a hose. Something as simple as that. Um, and uh, yeah, so we're pulling the some of the wiring inside the truck out. Um, and something that I've really... I was, I was talking crap about it, but honestly, now I think I'm gonna keep it, and that is this battery shutoff. And I'll tell you the reason why, guys. So, battery shutoff, I was kinda talking crap about it at first, but it's really not a terrible idea on a truck this old unless you probably redid every piece of wiring on it. I'm talking all of it. Now, it'll make sense to you guys why I'm not doing that eventually, but realistically, it's probably not a bad idea to just re rewire the whole entire truck, and I mean everything, and do new gauges, like everything that's, that has a wire on the thing. So for now, we're not gonna do that. Um, we're gonna, we're probably gonna keep the battery shut off. Now I'm gonna mount it somewhere so that way it's not just freaking sitting right there under your clutch pedal. So we'll mount it somewhere, make like a little bracket for it. Um, but yeah, I was definitely, I was calling that the Ghetto 5000 in the last video. And now I will say that's probably not a bad idea. Guys, this thing is so old. Look at the fuses in this truck. Like, yeah, I just, I don't know. I think it'd be pretty dumb to do away with the battery shut off and then have a stupid short or something in one of the old wires in this truck burn it to the ground. So I think we're gonna keep that thing. Um, we're still gonna clean the wiring harness up a lot. Don't get me wrong, but we're going to uh, we're gonna keep the Ghetto 5000. I hadn't got the tachometer removed, which I hate. They put right there. Screw two screw two holes in this freaking dash, but got it removed. And now, guys, I'm just tackling getting all this useless stuff out of the way. There's so much on this truck, and like I said, that again is why I am gonna keep the battery shut off on this truck. It, this is this is just ridiculous. But I'm gonna see what all we can get out of this thing, guys. As the point we're at right now is pulling some of the. Wiring out for the gauges. I think for now I'm gonna just get a little three gauge pod and hook it up down there until we have the time 
to go through and completely rewire this truck. I've decided that I'm not 100% happy with how it is, but I'm gonna be gonna be able to make it safe and functional for now. So we'll just basically keep the main shut off. I'm just gonna add in a little three gauge pod down there for oil pressure, coolant, and um, uh, voltage. So you'll at least have those three gauges, so it'll still be safe to drive and everything. And uh, yeah, I, it'd be cool to get these ones up here working, but I really wish that we uh, would have been the ones to do this swap because all this stuff would have been super easy to hook up. Oil pressure would have been easy to hook up. Uh, temperature would have been easy to hook up and alternator also, you know, the charge would have been easy. All you'd have to do is just find out where it ties in on the engine harness on the old 360 and hook it into this. But for whatever reason, they, uh, they didn't want to go through the trouble of hooking that stuff up. Um, so yeah, I mean, all it really was was, you know, adapting fittings for a coolant, uh, probe to go into the coolant system on the 12 valve oil pressure same deal just adapting that oil pressure sensor over and then the alternator i mean that's pretty self-explanatory but for some reason they didn't hook any of that up so i got the gauges all unplugged just kind of unplugging these gauges getting this stuff out of here not going to be using that like i said i'm just going to install for now just a little three pillar pod down there we are making massive progress inside of the truck we have so much of this pointless wiring cleaned up i'm so relieved right now to have i mean look at what we've got out of this thing already and this stuff is just not, a lot of it wasn't even hooked up to anything live wires just running through there to nothing it's looking better under the hood already i know there's still quite a bit going on guys but we are getting this thing cleaned up one wire at a time got some old horn wires pulled out of here got the vacuum gauge horn switch pulled out vacuum gauge removed it's looking a lot cleaner up under the hood of this thing uh next step guys is going to be mounting this uh, the ghetto 5000 switch somewhere strong I need to make a mount to uh, mount this thing a little bit more permanent guys we uh, we're making a lot of progress but it's getting pretty late tonight I think tomorrow I definitely need to get some pipe to get that redone start remaking that and then get this thing rewired and then guys we're gonna be getting pretty close to having this thing ready to just kind of tuck away for a little bit until you guys can see what our real plans are for it gosh I'm really red it's hot in here tonight and uh, I've been basically laying on my head sweating and uh, trying to get this thing cleaned up as best as we can so uh, yeah I think I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up guys uh, please do me a huge favor and like subscribe comment let me know what you guys think of the 79 build um, any suggestion you guys have for it or anything always feel free to leave that down below I always uh, will reply to most comments you know if there are questions or whatever so yeah uh, without further ado guys that's gonna do it we'll see you on the next one